the uh, minutes from the last meeting. Okay, is there a second? Second. Okay. All those in favor of approving uh, the minutes from the last meeting, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, the minutes are approved. And Katharina, are you giving us the, or is Kyle, who's giving us a report on? Uh, on Kyle's going to give you the complaint report, but I'm going to give a little program update before. Okay. Um, are you all aware that Jeremy is no longer with us? Oh, yeah, no. no. He, um, for family reasons, he had to move to Florida. Oh. So it is a great loss to our program. Uh, he has been, you know, above and beyond always and it's going to be very hard to replace him but we do have approval to replace him okay. and i believe the job has been posted it was supposed to be posted last week but the woman who posted it forgot to <laughs> so i know i was like i kept telling people go it's posted because i got notification it was posted and then i Finally emailed her because I went there and it wasn't there and she said, oh, it was in my draft file still. So, but it is posted now. So, hopefully we'll get some good internal and external candidates that we can review. Um, so that that should be good. Um, we're interviewing today to replace Caesar, who is our OSR. Um, and, and that position is needed sooner than later. So uh, hopefully we find a good candidate. Uh, I, I was talking before the meeting started that, you know, in my in my division, I have four, you know, basically OSR positions and three of them are vacant at this point in time. Now, what is an OSR? It's an office uh, representative or, or specialist. It's our clerical person, it's the person, you know, that keeps us all running and doing what we're supposed to be doing. <laughs> mm. um, and like everything in life, they're, you know, not valued as much. And so, you know, Caesar left us before Christmas and then two of the other ones got promoted to other positions in the health department. So, uh, which is great for them. You know, I, I'm very excited for them and, and you know, as I was saying before, it's the lowest position on our on our rung of positions. So you can't, you know, blame them for wanting to improve their lives. So um, and then I wanted just to really update you about the noise complaint on Branford Avenue. Um, they the county council did send out a letter. Uh, and it has not, the complaints have not ceased. Uh, I have asked Kyle to go back out there and see if we are going to document another violation. I am meeting with the county council today at two o'clock for an update on what's going on. So unfortunately, I don't know if what their next steps are since they have ignored the letter, you know, how they're gonna proceed if they're gonna to try to get some type of court relief, you know, what, how they're gonna proceed. Will you let us know? Yeah, yeah I'll send out an email once yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, so we don't have to wait a month to find out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's so concerning that this goes on this long, that these people have been dealing with this for so long, mm -hmm. you know, and there's, we're, we're not, we're tied up too. I mean, we can't. Everybody is, and it's so frustrating. But I will tell you, the first time we met as a group, I told them it would be at least three years before this would be resolved. Just because I've been involved in cases like this before, where they, you know, when it is really a genuine concern that there's not an easy fix to. Um, and, and it just takes a long time because everybody has their own white rights and you have to go through all the processes in order to have a good outcome because once you start skipping steps then you have to go back and start all over so you have to do it the long drawn out way or it doesn't work but we're only two years in so i'm still on target 
That's yeah, a shame. I'm just going to use the pandemic as an excuse for how, how long it's taking to. So. <laughs> well, I, I don't think, well, the, if it gets caught up in courts and our legal department can you, has, has used that word, but, it, you know, in, in my experience, it just takes a long time to get things properly resolved. So, um, I don't know if you remember A, Z, and Z and the dust to the special school district. Yes. And they put we up that big wall. Mm -hmm. That took about a year and a half, but we didn't have to get legal involved in that. They, you know, they pretty much, you know, did it without county legal. Now the special school district had their lawyers involved, but um, we didn't go that route at the county. So. Okay. Um, so are there additional noise complaints that we need to hear about? Yeah. Um, Kyle, Kyle, you might be muted. I can hear him because he's in the next office over. I don't, yeah, I don't even see him anymore. I don't. I don't. There he is. You're muted, Kyle. Uh -huh. oh, you were unmuted for a minute. There you okay. go. I don't know why the little button was clicked on mute. I've never clicked that before, but maybe it is just on mute by default. So uh, a, we did uh, the group that you normally complains about AZZ, they did send us an email three times in January to complain about the noise. It probably wasn't, weren't the only days that they were disturbed by noise. It was just the three days that they felt compelled to send us an email, I guess. Uh, I did, I did go out there on Monday uh, and did document another violation. It didn't seem like it was going to be very loud at first, but then towards the end of when I was getting ready to take the um, sound meter off the tripod and everything, it's like they just started dropping pipes all all over the place and it ended up being a violation. So I did document another violation that was on the 31st, so yesterday. I was we did. Like there might have been a concern about even loud music playing there. I don't remember where I read that or saw that. Maybe it was in the paper. It was a um, mess. Yeah. At the beginning of this the music, I believe, was mentioned a few times as part of the noise that was coming from there. And I have heard them playing music there before in the morning. It, it's probably just a stereo or something that the workers play while they're working. But it, it sure it echoes pretty loud and they could probably hear it. So they added it to the complaint. But I haven't heard the music in a while. Okay. They may have told them to stop doing that or something. We had two asbestos complaints. Uh, one was on January 12th, and it was floor tile being removed from a laundromat, and they removed uh, apparent about um, 1,200 square feet of floor tile, and they did it while business was still going. Uh, and one of the customers had complained, and right now I think the uh, investigation into that is still ongoing. I know Tom went out there but he hasn't put an official investigation into the uh, database yet for that one. Uh, the other asbestos complaint was they were removing ACM without using water as an emission control method and was, and was falsifying the daily air monitoring readings. That's what the complaint alleges, but not necessarily what the reality was. Uh, it's not, I'm pretty sure it's not uncommon for them to take outside air samples um, on the outside of a building where a project is being done to compare with their inside air samples. So <laughs> I guess somebody saw that and thought that they were trying to falsify it, but Tom did go investigate that uh, facility and he said everything looked fine and appeared to be in compliance. Um, we had two burning complaints, one on Tuesday the 25th and that was the one that you had sent me an email about, Katharina, about the complainant said that there was burning, illegal burning, they were burning their trash, they didn't have trash service, and they were taking their trash to other places and dumping it, and they were also burning it. 
And uh, we went out to investigate that one, Moretu and I, he's in the uh, waste program. And the, we didn't see anything in the yard. It looked pretty clean. They had a waste connections dumpster out there and Moretu did confirm they had trash service. The, we talked to the lady that lived there and she let us go into the backyard and there was nothing there that would lead me to believe that there was any burning taking place. And so we don't know what the issue was with the complainant on that, but it doesn't appear to be a valid complaint. So I resolved with that one. Then there was another burning complaint. Um, next door neighbor has a large amount of smoke coming from their home that is ending in our backyard. There's a strong smoky odor in the air. We saw smoke for more than an hour and we can smell the smoke today as well. I went out to investigate that one and I did see smoke. I did smell smoke in my car in the street as soon as I pulled up there and I could see some smoke rising up from the backyard. It was a pretty narrow column of smoke coming up that you might uh, suspect that was just coming out of a fireplace or something like that. I couldn't see what they were burning because there was a lot of fences and trees and shrubs. I took a look from a few different angles, but I couldn't really tell what they were burning. So I did send them a, a letter, a letter of warning just to let them know what the county burning ordinance is and that there is a nuisance ordinance and that there was a complaint about the smell of smoke. So hopefully that will resolve that one. And I couldn't, I couldn't tell what they were burning, so I couldn't really necessarily say that there was a violation of the burning ordinance, but it does, if what the complainant said is true, then it, then there probably was a violation of the nuisance ordinance, but you can't really say for a hundred percent. So I did just send them a letter of warning to let them know what the burning ordinance was. Then we had another complaint that was, this is the last one. It wasn't a burning complaint. It was a grinding or just a general air pollution complaint. There was a company that was grinding on the outside of a brick apartment building. And one of the residences of the building called me to complain about it, saying that the dust from the grinding was getting into the windows and they could smell it inside and it was causing a nuisance for them. So I went out there to check it out and they were still there doing the grinding when I showed up and it was creating quite a large plume of dust on the you know right around the exterior of the building and around the windows and everything and it it looked um it did look like it could be hazardous situation to because if you breathe that in it can irritate and uh, could even cause health problems and so i did tell them that they needed to take further action to do something about the dust they said they were using water they were spraying water on the wall before they were grinding but it was it was a cold day. I'm pretty sure it was below zero. So that may have been why the water wasn't helping. Um, I had a lot of back and forth with the company when I was out there. They were at challenging basically my whether or not I can make them stop, which I'm pretty sure I can't make them stop legally. I mean, I don't think if I told them, hey, you have to stop, you're breaking the ordinance. I don't if they continued, I don't think they could be arrested for that or charged for that or anything but they did at the end when i was getting ready to leave the property manager showed up and she had the building owner on speakerphone and and somebody from the company and they all at the end of the day after i explained everything what i saw and why i thought it was a dangerous situation they agreed to wait until uh, the weather got warmer so it turned out okay because they did agree to wait and so the complainant did get some relief from that but um yeah I, we talk about this i uh, spoke about this one briefly in an email Catherine. i, I don't know what I, i'm not 100 percent sure what they can do to reduce that dust besides maybe like you said putting plastic barriers up over the windows on the outside that might help so that one is temporarily resolved until i guess they start start their work again and Hopefully it doesn't cause any more dust and I don't get a complaint and we never have to hear about it again, but then again, we may. So that was the last complaint. Okay. Well, doesn't it seem a little odd that they're outside of an apartment building? 
as opposed to being in a, you know, a structure or at least outside of a structure where a business would be run? Yeah, I don't you know. know. I mean? It was, um, I don't know if, if anybody knows what tuck pointing is. Mm -hmm. Yes, sure. Yeah, that's, oh. that's what they said that that's what they were doing. And it was a tuck pointing company. Oh, that's a whole different ballgame. So were they grinding right. out the old um, sure. mortar to be before the tuck pointing? Got it. That's probably I, what I don't actually know what that is. I've never heard of that before. Yeah, yeah, it's the it's the the uh, mortar between the bricks. Uh huh. And uh, when that wears thin, tuck pointing is replacing that mortar. Okay. It's just maintaining. So that's the what building. they were doing. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, and I'm sure that's something that they have to do. And and I knew, you know, when I was out there, I'm thinking, okay, they're just trying to get some work done, and I'm sure it's normal to do that, even on an apartment building. Sure. So there's. I'm sorry. I thought it was somebody that was kind of running a business outside the thing. I misunderstood. Yeah. No, it was an actual legit business that was out there doing the doing, doing work. work to the building. Yes. Okay. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Okay. I understand uh, that. But Katharina, that does bring up a point that um, a more general question is that if an ex inspector, I'm sorry for the beeps, uh, if an ins inspector fi finds something that is uh, perceived to be hazardous, at that and at that moment, is there any? Can they call local law enforcement? What can they do to put? Well, if it's something immediate and health threatening, which this was not, mm -hmm. you know, we could probably call the police or the mm -hmm. fire department, depending on what it is. Mm -hmm. But normally how we compel people to stop their actions is we explain to them, you can continue to move forward. However, as you continue to move forward, you now are quite aware that this is a violation of the air pollution control program and that, you, you know, the violations are knowingly being done. And because a lot of times when people, you know, start you know or violating the code they say well i didn't know this was against the code and and that's a legitimate defense if you go to court mm -hmm. but if you tell somebody we know you're you're you now know that you are in violation they are now knowingly breaking the law and it's pretty much a threat that you know this you know if this ends up in court, you're going to be guilty because you were told. Um, and that's pretty much all the leverage we have at this point in time. Um, most people will stop. Um, very rarely has have people continually knowingly violated the law. Um, So, I mean, that is, I mean, as frustrating as it is for you to hear, it's more frustrating for us to have to deal with it. Okay, any questions, comments, whatever from the board? Oh, I forgot to ask at the beginning, do, do we have any outside people on the call? I didn't see anybody. Now, Carrie Dickens is with us. She is our uh, director of our environmental services. Um, she's probably the only one that you may not recognize. There we go. Hi, Carrie. <laughs> Hello, everyone. <laughs> um, okay. All right. Yeah, Karina, I did have one question. John Furtick here. I sure. saw an article in the paper. Uh, apparently, the state or the county was going to request a change in status for the, the metro area to one of uh, uh, compliance via air regulations versus their current non-compliant status? Right. Right now, we're for the 2015 ozone um, attainment, we are non-attainment and we are We're not moderate, 
or the one below moderate, and I can't remember what it's called. It's not called minor, but we're in non-compliance at the lowest level for the 2015 ozone season. So what the state is trying to do is get us put in attainment and go to a maintenance area for the 2015 ozone standard. And they have to do it now because they look back over the last three years and average them. And right now we don't, when you go back three years, uh, we don't have any uh, violations. Um, because to have a violation, it's got a, the fourth highest reading for that station on an eight hour average. I think, it's, yeah, it's an eight hour average has to be in violation. But if we average the 2020, we, we didn't have any violations for 2021, but we did have violations in 2020. And so what they're trying to do is get the average of 17, 18, and 19 in there and get us non-attainment and in a maintenance status. So when they go to look at the 18, 19, 20, even though we are in violation, we're in maintenance and we'll be given another three years to correct that. It's really convoluted, but it's the way life works again. So if we get, for those three years, if we get our not our attainment status and we're in maintenance, then when they go to do the next three years and we're in violation, they won't bump us up to moderate. And if we get bumped up another degree for our, our, our non-attainment, that'll put uh, new regulations in place. I'm not sure what the state new regulations would be, but we could maybe go back to having vapor recovery or, you know, they have to come up with rules and regulations that would reduce our air pollution if we get kicked up to moderate. They were very comfortable what they were doing in the previous administration, but now that the administrations have changed, they're not as comfortable that this will all go through. But, um, that is what they're trying to do, and it'll be very interesting to watch and see if it gets if it goes through. Is there a time frame when a decision, yay or nay, might be made? There are time frames put in place, and I'll be honest, I'm not sure exactly where we are with those times. Like we submitted the uh, notification. The state submitted the notification to EPA. They wanted the determination to be non-attainment. And then I believe that EPA has probably six months, 180 days to respond to that. And okay. they'd have to respond to that before all, that we have not submitted the next year's uh, attainment demonstration, which would show us a non-attainment. So, um, we have to get this all in place before we qualify. And it usually takes two to three years for them to qualify a year of data and to do all the calculations. So we are normally two or three years behind with the data analysis. Uh, so, I mean, the point I'm getting to is hopefully they'll get us and they'll make that non, uh, they'll make that attainment demonstration for those three years and EPA will put us in um, maintenance and not bump us up to moderate. But it's right now, it's just a waiting game for EPA to act. Okay. Does, did everybody understand that? <laughs> I just have one question. Being gone hurts my brain. I'll let you know <laughs> is, because is I have to rethink all this station? stuff. <laughs> is there one particular station that's in that, that is showing up non-attainment? Normally, it's Old Orchard. Okay. And I'd have to go back and see what 
And the other thing that gets this all messed up too is because our non attainment area is in region seven and region five, that complicates things too, because both regions have to agree to be in attainment. And because we can't have half the non attainment area in attainment and not in attainment, uh, because there's four counties. In Illinois, that are part of our attainment demonstration. Ah, uh, that so Missouri's in re region right. seven, Illinois is in region five. Correct. Gotcha. And that really complicates things when it comes to attainment demonstrations. Where, where is the old orchard uh, monitor? It is north of here in, I believe, St. Charles County, and it's like. It's on the river across from Alton. Right. Oh, okay. We used to call it the Alton one. Okay. Yeah. Um, that's been the issue forever as long as I'm right. right. That's what I think too. Yeah. 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 It's always been the our problem child. You'd think they would have removed it by now, but <laughs> yeah. I'm joking. <laughs> Okay, well, keep us updated on that too. That would I be will. Um, important to know. We used to, for, for those who haven't been on the board <laughs> forever, um, we used to actually uh, talk about this every meeting. Um, yeah, because it was, we were really mm -hmm. in trouble <laughs> for a long yeah. time. Yeah. It yeah. seems yeah. to me like we've come a long way. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, in being 2007, in 1995, and 2007, 2015. And in 1995, we were severe, I think. Yeah. Are we? Believe I it. believe we were for mm -hmm. a short period of time. Mm -hmm. right. So, can't remember. Marginal is what we are. Oh. Marginal. And then well, that's they a lot. Cook us up. Yeah. They want to feed us. <laughs> sounds good. Up to moderate. That's good. Okay. All right. Sounds good. If there, uh, if there are, are there any other questions, comments? Okay, hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Nobody wants to adjourn? I'll move to adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Everybody's muted. Great. All right. Terrific. We are adjourned and we'll see you uh, at the beginning of uh, what, are, what are we on? March. March. God, I can't believe Great. that. Yeah, it's crazy. Wow. March 1st again. Yeah, there's 20 really? days March in February. First. March 1st. Okay. All right. Okay. Have a good month, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.